A land steeped in ancient history, beautiful and vast, but also rugged and dangerous. A princess who rules the land with patience and justice, but lost in a desperate situation. An evil as dark and unforgiving as the night itself, bent on taking the land and the princess as his own. A golden power, with the ability to grant the wishes of whoever wields it, and a hero, born of common lineage, destined to struggle against insurmountable odds, face countless obstacles, and ultimately defeat the evil that threatens to destroy this land. This is The Legend of Zelda. For many people across the world, the word adventure is synonymous with the video game series The Legend of Zelda. This series of video games started in 1986 on the Japanese Famicom video game system and continues strong to this day. For many children, one of the Legend of Zelda games was their first taste of adventure and the first time they were set free to wander a fantastic world filled with ancient ruins, terrible monsters, and mystical treasures. Many people across several generations have walked in the footprints of Link, the silent elf-like protagonist of the series, as he has braved dark forests, climbed rugged mountains, trudged blistering deserts, and explored forgotten ruins, usually to wield the mighty Master Sword, defeat the evil Lord Ganon, retrieve the power of the Triforce, and rescue the Princess Zelda, as she labors to purge the evil that blights her land. Though the basic structure remains the same from game to game, Link has taken many forms throughout the years. The release of a new Zelda game is an occasion to celebrate, a chance to explore a new world, traverse new landscapes, discover new treasures, and go adventuring again with a very old friend. And with the release of each new game comes a new wave of merchandise, memorabilia, collectibles, and toys. But it wasn't always this way. Let's go back to the beginning to explore the merchandise of The Legend of Zelda. It all began in 1986 with the release of The Legend of Zelda on the Famicom game system in Japan. The game was brought to the United States in 1987 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. For many kids, this game was the first time they would go adventuring through a wide open fantastic land. The game was a phenomenal success, and with it came a barrage of merchandise. Link was considered one of the tentpole characters in the early years of the Nintendo Entertainment System, and would often be found right beside Mario on official promotional materials, merchandise, and artwork. And there was a lot of merchandise to be had in the early days of the NES. Shirts, hats, waste baskets, backpacks, school materials, and even their own cartoon series. Zelda and Link were common sights in the late 1980s. Nintendo even had its own cereal by the Ralston Cereal Company. It featured two flavors in every box, Fruity, which was represented by Mario, and Berry, which was represented by Link. The box art changed periodically to show different scenes from the games. But Nintendo would be pretty sparing about offering Legend of Zelda toys in those days. These are amongst the most famous and some of the earliest Legend of Zelda offerings. The Nintendo Trophy figures. They came in Mario, Punch-Out, and Zelda flavors, and I've already completed an entire video dedicated just to these trophies alone, so check that one out. The trophies came in a box with a plastic display window in the front, and a picture on the back of the box that showed the six scenes depicted on each trophy. There were six scenes shown, and the general consensus is the Link Battle Zola trophy was never produced or offered for purchase, so there were five Zelda-themed trophies altogether. The first trophy in the Legend of Zelda line is Gibdo Attacks Link. Here Link brandishes his sword and shield, his primary weapons of choice, against the undead enemy called a Gibdo. The next trophy is titled, A Keese Descends on Link. Here the hero Link is depicted shooting a bow at the bat-like Keese enemy that attacks from above him. This trophy is titled, Link Boomerangs a Goma. Here Link is in the process of throwing a boomerang at an enemy called a Goma while he descends a ladder. 
and this trophy is titled Link Fights the Head of a Gliok. This scene shows Link grabbing the head of a Gliok dragon, who is in the process of breathing fire to deliver the finishing blow with his sword. The last Legend of Zelda trophy is titled A Trap Attacks Link. This trophy sported the largest and most detailed Link figure, but really was the scene with the least amount of action to be depicted. While there was a lot of general merchandise for the Legend of Zelda game, very few toys or toy-like items were produced in the earliest days of the NES. This wind-up Link toy was produced by NASTA and offered in 1989. Milton Bradley offered several puzzles depicting scenes from the game, or at least scenes that you might have imagined while playing the game. The graphics were still pretty rough back then, and generally only represented the action that was playing out in our minds. As usual with these offerings, the art was not the best. Milton Bradley also offered the Legend of Zelda board game. While the box art is certainly strange, it is decently high quality for the time. I've never played this game, so I'm not sure how it works, but the board certainly looks interesting, and I like the overworld versus underworld theme. But that game pales in comparison to the Legend of Zelda game produced by Bandai and offered only in Japan. This box art is absolutely amazing. And the game board is incredible. It is a detailed reproduction of the video game's Land of Hyrule in that cool art style. This appears to have been an adventure game in the vein of Game Workshop's Hero Quest or TSR's Dungeon. It came furnished with these amazing miniature figurines. And look at these game cards. It appears that the creatures had different stats, and it appears there were both beneficial and detrimental random encounters. Here are some of the boss monster cards. The artwork is reminiscent of the artwork found in the original game's manual, but it's definitely different and has its own very unique style. And look at the artwork for the trifecta of characters Link, Zelda, and Ganon. I really wish they had released this game in the United States. I definitely would have bought it. Maybe we can convince Bandai to re-release it. Well, as I said before, there was very little offered besides artwork on everyday items in the early days of the NES. Here is a pin that depicted Link in one of his most iconic and earliest positions. I don't have much information about this item. And that would bring us to 1988, when Nintendo would release the sequel to The Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link. The game would go in a very different direction than the original, but was still very popular. The release of this game would see a bit more merchandise produced and offered in stores. In this game, Link must get the third Triforce and wake Zelda, who was put under a sleep spell, while defeating the minions of the late Ganon, who want to revive their defeated master using Link's blood. This game depicted a Link that was older, taller, and more lithe, but still very similar to the original's depiction. Here is another pin that I found, but again, I have very little information on it. And the toy company Applause would produce this small PVC figure of Link from that sequel game. And the Nintendo serial system boxes would be updated to depict scenes from Super Mario Bros. 2 and Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. And the watch company Nelsonic would offer two different watches that depicted Legend of Zelda iconography. Watches would come to be one of the major modes of merchandising for the Legend of Zelda games. One of the watches even played an LCD Zelda game. The game watch came in different packaging and in different colors, but the face and the graphics on the face were always generally the same. Let's take a closer look at that watch face. Here is a watch that was broken, so it displays all of the LCD game icons of Link and his opponents all at once. It looks like bats were the major threat in this game. Or maybe I should say keys. Keys were the major threat. Sometimes the Nelsonic game watch is confused with a Nintendo Legend of Zelda Game & Watch, which was different and released in 1989. The Game & Watch also offered an LCD game, but it was different than the game offered with the Nelsonic watch. The game had a more Adventure of Link feel to it, and the action was depicted from the side instead of the top-down view of the Nelsonic game. After the release of The Adventure of Link, things would go silent for a while. 
A Legend of Zelda merchandising Dark Age would descend on the land, even though two popular games would be released for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and the Game Boy. It would be nearly 10 years before the Light of Hope would begin to shine again. Then in 1998, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time on its Nintendo 64 console. The game was highly anticipated and became a huge success, but with it also came a golden age of Legend of Zelda merchandise and collectibles. In this game, Link travels back and forth through time using a magic ocarina flute in an attempt to stop Ganon from conquering the world and throwing the land into a dark apocalyptic setting. The first 3D Zelda game, this game would really set the direction for the upcoming games in the series, including gameplay, style, and the characteristic traits of the land of Hyrule. Then the floodgates opened and through them flowed action figures, jackets, shirts, hats, soundtrack CDs, and even more action figures. Oh, so many action figures. The first really offered for the Legend of Zelda games. The merchandising blitz for the Ocarina of Time was far larger than for any Zelda game before it. There is so much merchandise offered for this game that it would be impossible to cover it all, so we're going to have to just hit the highlights. There were many different types of watches offered depicting Legend of Zelda iconography and themes. This interesting pocket watch was manufactured before the game was given its official name, and it is referred to as Zelda 64 much like Mario 64. They would later update the watches to have the proper Ocarina of Time moniker. And there were several different action figure releases on different scales and by different manufacturers. There was a Link and a Ganon released on a 6 inch scale. Link came with a sword and shield but Ganon did not have any accessories. There was also this set of action figures constructed on a 3.5 inch scale. The set offered Link, Ganon, and the Princess Zelda and Link came with a sword and shield, but the other two characters again did not come with any accessories. This figure set was originally offered at Target as an exclusive as a pre-order promotional. The box of three was $10 and you could also get a $10 coupon for the game when it was released. And the figures are virtually free. These action figures were actually pretty well done and decently detailed. They had limited Star Wars type articulation but they still looked pretty great, and they were some of the first action figures available for the Legend of Zelda game series. But these figures were not the only Ocarina of Time toys offered when the game was new to stores. The popular 1990s toy company Toy Biz would create their own Ocarina of Time action figures, complete with horse mounts, and offer them at this time. Link came with his favorite horse, Epona and Toy Biz released Ganon on his dark steed. Ganon also came with a trident-like spear and a great skull mask, which he rocked like a 1990s war duke. <laughs> Toy Biz would even offer figures of Impa, a young Princess Zelda and her royal horse. And several years later, the toy company Joyride would offer these more deluxe Ocarina of Time action figures in the toy line called Nintendo Power Presents. The Joyride figures offered the best detail, sculpting, and articulation of any Ocarina of Time figures before them, and maybe the best in the Legend of Zelda series up to this time. And with the Ocarina of Time's release, a staple of the Legend of Zelda toy and merchandising was born. The Legend of Zelda themed a Gashapon or capsule figure. Tomy would offer these tiny little capsule figures. You could get young and adult versions of Link and Zelda, or a Ganon, or even a Poe ghost creature. Or you could get these little Gashapon figures. They were either sculpted in crystal-like translucent plastic, or they had translucent accessories such as Link's sword and shield and several bits of odd merchandise was offered during the reign of the Ocarina of Time. A good example is this candy dispenser with Young Link's head on top. And Burger King would offer this strange little Link game with a kid's meal during a general Nintendo game promotion. The meals offered toys and games themed around several different Nintendo games. Well, this wraps up our look at the Ocarina of Time themed merchandise and from the time that the game was in stores. 
but Ocarina of Time themed merchandise, figures, and collectibles will continue to be produced and offered well into present times. And we'll get into some of those items a little later in the video. And the collectible and merchandising good times would just keep rolling for a while. In 2000, Nintendo would release the follow-up to the Ocarina of Time, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In this game, Link finds himself in the world of Termina, and must travel back and forth in time again using his magic ocarina flute to stop an evil enchanted mask from destroying the world by crashing the moon into it. The company Epoch would release a line of action figures for the game. The action figures depicted the young Link found in the game, along with his horse Epona, and his alternate forms, which he could transform into when donning enchanted masks. The figures were constructed on a base 6-inch scale, and each of the figures was offered with a varying amount of accessories. Link came with a shield, two different swords, and swappable hands. The Deku, or plant person version of Link, came with five magic masks from the game, probably because he was by far the smallest character offered. There was also a Link offered with a Pona. Several people felt that these figures were even better than the Joyride figures that were offered at the same time for the Ocarina of Time, but that really is up to personal preference. But after this we would enter another miniature Dark Age when it came to Legend of Zelda merchandise and collectibles. It would not be as deep or as barren as the Dark Ages of the early 1990s, but certainly the ship would slow and the wind would go out of the sails. And speaking of wind in the sails, it was in 2002 that Nintendo would release its next Legend of Zelda game, the nautical-themed Wind Waker. The game would offer a new and innovative art style to the series, but also dramatically change the tone and feel. In this game, Link hits the open sea, sailing from island to island to rescue his sister and save the world from Ganon once again. There was not much offered in conjunction with the Wind Waker at the time of its release. These capsule figures were some of the only toys offered during that period. They featured Link's sister, Ariel, and Tetra, who was the current incarnation of the Princess Zelda, and three different tune-styled Links. Now this would change in later times, and years later we would be treated to several figures in the Wind Waker style, but not much was offered upon the release of the game. The Link figures of the series were reworked, recolored, and given new swords for the release of the cooperative play Legend of Zelda game The Four Swords. The eyes of the figures were separate from the rest of the head, giving them a haunted marionette kind of look to them. The figures featured soul-staring action. And thus we move to the next game in the series, The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. This game is one of the few games not created by Nintendo, but by the game company Capcom. It kept the high standards of the series and is considered a solid entry. In this game, Link dons a magic hat that can shrink him down to tiny size so he can interact with the tiny pixie-like inhabitants of the world called the Minish. These tiny dangler figures were almost all that was offered in conjunction with this game. They depicted Link with several of the in-game items, Zelda with a shield, a Minish with a four-leaf clover, and the main antagonist of the game, the wizard Vati. These capsule PVC figures would be the most common form of figure and the main mode of merchandising for many years and for many games to come. Nintendo would then release the next game in the series, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, in 2006. This game would return Link to a more realistic style and a far darker Hyrule. In this game, Link must stop an evil wizard from the Twilight Dimension who is slowly covering Hyrule with his dimension's cursed darkness. In the Twilight, Link transforms into a wolf and must complete tasks in this cursed form. The return to a more realistic Link would create a stylistic dichotomy for years and for games to come with Link sometimes appearing in his more traditional form, and other times in his extremely stylistic tune form, as seen in the previous game. The Twilight Princess game would also have some Gashapon offered in conjunction with its release. These capsule figures were more like small models, and when assembled stood about 3.5 inches high, but they offered very little in the way of articulation. 
The Twilight Princess figures included Link, Zelda, the evil wizard Zant, and Midna, the titular Twilight Princess astride Link in his wolf form. And this set was also offered, which came with a Twilight Princess soundtrack CD, a die-cast Master Sword which is about 6 inches long, and a Hylian shield. It also came with a Certificate of Authenticity. Nintendo then released the next game in the series, The Legend of Zelda The Phantom Hourglass. The Phantom Hourglass was a direct sequel to the Wind Waker game and featured the tuned version of Link in his next adventure on the high seas. In this game, Link must save Zelda who has been abducted by ghost pirates with the help of the greedy and cowardly but good-hearted Captain Linebeck. And once again, Gashapon or Capsule figures were some of the only merchandise that was released for this game. A small line of PVC figures was offered. The line included Toon Link, Captain Linebeck, two Goron characters, Tetra, and a heavily armored Phantom Warrior figure. And that would lead directly to Nintendo's next game in the series, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. This game was a loose continuation of the timeline established in The Wind Waker and The Phantom Hourglass, but would take place years and years in the future, with a new incarnation of Link and Zelda. In this game, Link must re-establish ancient train tracks across the world and use a train engine to traverse the landscape, while getting help from a disembodied spirit of Zelda who can now possess the phantom suits of armor and give Link help to recover her physical body and save Hyrule yet again. Once again, the only real release for this game was a set of capsule PVC figures. The lineup is much larger this time, but the figures were slightly smaller than the ones offered for the Phantom Hourglass game. But everything would change in 2011. This was the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda and Nintendo would release The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for the Wii video game system. This game would take players back to the very origins of Ganon, Princess Zelda, Link, and Hyrule itself. Players took control of a Link who, in appearance, was very similar to the Link from Twilight Princess, as he seeks to find and help one of the first incarnations of the Princess Zelda, who is herself laboring to awaken her own inherent mystical powers and defeat the great evil that threatens to engulf the world. This version of Link would become very popular and would be the most common form he would take for the next half decade. This game's Link could be found in merchandise that tied to other toy and collectible lines for years to come and that were far more involved than just the Legend of Zelda series. We will discuss these lines and those toys more towards the end of the video. But it is needless to say that this game saw the production or release of more tie-in merchandise and collectibles than many games before it. Since Skyward Sword was released at the 25th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda games, Tomy produced this line of PVC Gashapon figures that celebrated Skyward Sword, the Ocarina of Time, and the Phantom Hourglass games. Zelda and Link in their updated Skyward Sword versions would be the most important figures released with this line. They were relatively well detailed and offered in classic Skyward Sword poses from the game's art. The Ocarina of Time figures included a young Link with a slingshot and a young Zelda. But the Phantom Hourglass figures were actually just re-releases. The Link and Zelda were the same figures from the Phantom Hourglass line that was released in 2007. They looked nearly identical to their appearances in the Wind Waker game, so harken back to that entry in the series also. But this game was the start of several figure and collectible lines that would feature Link and Zelda for years to come. Figma released a deluxe Link action figure in the Skyward Sword style. And Metacom released a very deluxe and detailed figure featuring this version of Link. The figure was incredibly well made and featured several accessories and clothing manufactured of real cloth instead of molded plastic. There were several more figures released that featured this version of Link but they're connected to other more involved toy and figure lines and we will discuss them later. The next game in the series was The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. This game created for the Nintendo 3DS handheld system was a direct sequel to the 1993 Super Nintendo game A Link to the Past. 
Link would once again find himself needing to shift back and forth between the real and spiritual worlds, but would also be given an artifact that can transform him into a living two-dimensional picture. There were several figures released for this game, including these capsule keychain figures that were created in that chibi style, made famous by the Good Smile Nendroid figures that we'll discuss a little later. Figma would also release a deluxe action figure that featured this version of Link that was found in the game. This version of Link was a stylistic throwback to the Link found in the original Zelda games, as the game was tied to the very early third game from the series. Then in 2014, Nintendo partnered with Koei Games to create Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors was not a mainline Zelda game, but was a spin-off game that utilized characters and settings from the Legend of Zelda universe. Instead of being the standard action-adventure type game, the game was an arcade-style hack-and-slash that saw Link and several other characters fighting their way through hordes of enemies to accomplish tasks in the form of game levels. Small capsule figures were created for this game too, featuring Link, Zelda, Ganon, and Lana, a character exclusive to the game. But perhaps the most significant change to the Legend of Zelda series would come about in 2017. This is the year that Nintendo would release the game The Breath of the Wild. This game was both a total change to style and gameplay when compared to the other recent entries, and in other ways a return to the open world adventuring that made the original Zelda game title so popular. In this entry, the player once again takes the role of the hero of legend Link, who has been sealed away and placed in suspended animation for a hundred years. During that time, Hyrule has fallen into ruin, and Link must regain his memories, find out where Zelda is, and figure out what is causing the despair that haunts this land. The Breath of the Wild continues to use the older, more mature model for Link, but his garb has been greatly changed. He is now commonly depicted wearing a blue tunic and no longer wears the green pointed Phrygian style hat. Just as Medicom had produced a highly detailed and deluxe figure portraying the Link from Skyward Sword, they also produced an amazing figure for the Link from Breath of the Wild. This figure would also have an outfit created of real cloth. And again, Gashapon figures were offered in the form of keychains. Like the Link Between Worlds keychains, these figures would also take that good smile, Nendoroid Chibi style. A basic look that Nintendo would lead heavily into, and that leads us to our latest entry in the Legend of Zelda game line. In 2019, Nintendo released this updated version of the game, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The original game was for the Game Boy handheld system and was released in 1993. This version would have a distinctive art style, making Link and the inhabitants of the island of Koholint, the setting for the game, look like small plastic toys. Gamefly produced this vinyl Link figure for the game. The figure took full advantage of the art style and was made very similar to the Funko line of toys popular with modern collectors. And while that brings us to the end of the video games in the series up to the point that this video was created, there are still other figures and collectibles to discuss. These other figures usually represent Link from different games and from different iterations, but are often part of a series that's created to either commemorate Links from several different times, or be part of a much larger, more complex toy and collectible series. Some of the most popular are the Good Smile Company's Nendroid figures, which depict Link and Zelda in the highly anime-style chibi appearance with exaggerated and childlike features and oversized heads. The Nendroid figures have interchangeable details such as faces and appendages and usually come with several different accessories. They have produced Legend of Zelda characters from several different games in the game line. And the company Medicom also produced these figures depicting Link from multiple games throughout the years. They are part of the Ultra Detail figure line which produces many figures from many different media properties and products. Released in waves or series. They originally produced Link figures from Skyward Sword, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, The Wind Waker, A Link Between Worlds, and even one depicting Link from the original NES game. The latest Ultra Detail figures released depict Link in his Ocarina of Time, Minish Cap, and Breath of the Wild versions. They stand about 3 inches tall, but they can vary in height due to the Link that is being depicted. And of course, there are multiple Legend of Zelda figures from Nintendo's own Amiibo line of interactive figures. 
The Amiibo figures are an extensive and complex line of figures that depict characters from dozens of video game properties. They are well designed, sculpted, and detailed, but they also contain electronic chips in their bases, allowing them to interact in some way with tons of different video games. In the game Breath of the Wild, the Amiibos can be used to give Link various weapons and accessories in the game. The Legend of Zelda themed Amiibos can be broken into three major lines. The Breath of the Wild line, the Smash Brothers game line, and the general Legend of Zelda line. Here are three Amiibos, one that depicts Midna and Link in wolf form from Twilight Princess, and two that depict Link from the game Breath of the Wild. These Amiibo figures depict Zelda, an evil Moblin enemy, and the robot-like Guardian enemy from Breath of the Wild. Next we will look at the Legend of Zelda Smash Brothers Amiibos. These were some of the earliest Amiibos and were produced to interact with the popular Smash Brothers fighting game. These Amiibos depict Ganon, Zelda, and Link, generally as seen from the game Twilight Princess, a Sheik character from the game Ocarina of Time, and a Toon-styled Link from the game Wind Waker. But another line of Amiibos was produced depicting Link from different games throughout the series. This line was generally released together and created to interact with many different games. These Amiibos depict Link from the Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and the Wind Waker, as well as a Zelda from the Wind Waker game. And these Amiibos depict Link from Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, and a 3D interpretation of Link's 8-bit icon from the original game. But since the release of these figures, several more Legend of Zelda-themed Amiibos have been released. Nintendo also released Amiibos depicting the four champion characters from the Breath of the Wild game, a Zelda and her bird companion from Skyward Sword, and a Link from the remake of Link's Awakening. And around the same time, the toy company Jack Specific would pick up the old World of Nintendo brand from the NES days and create a large line of action figures and toys based on various Nintendo games and properties. The action figures would come in various sizes, but the flagship toy line would feature the characters in the 3.5 to 4 inch scale that is so popular with action figures since the late 1970s. The line would once again depict Link in several different iterations across many different games. And Jack Specific is still creating Nintendo and Legend of Zelda action figures currently, as these figures that depict Link and Zelda from the Breath of the Wild game just hit markets lately. These figures do not seem to be sold under the World of Nintendo logo though. The World of Nintendo line featured different characters from different games in many various levels of price and quality. Jack Specific also offered these smaller, less articulated, but also cheaper versions of Link and other Legend of Zelda characters in different types of packaging. And they also offered Wind Waker playsets in their Micro Land toy subseries, which featured tiny figurines and playsets with snap together bases. All of the bases from the different playsets could be connected to create much larger play worlds for the tiny half inch figures. Wind Waker did not see much offered in its heyday but it would certainly catch up with offerings and releases in subsequent toy and collectible lines. And Jack Specific would produce this giant two foot tall Link figure from the game Skyward Sword. The card and ornament company Hallmark also produced some great figures as Christmas tree ornaments. This ornament was released in 2018 and depicts Link in his original version from the original game art. The ornament played the title theme song when a button was pressed at its base. And this ornament was produced the same year. It depicts Link in his Wind Waker version. Hallmark produced these ornaments also. Tiny 8-bit versions of Link and Zelda and an ornament that looks like the original gold Nintendo Entertainment System cartridge. And this is the last bit of Legend of Zelda merchandise for this video. This Breath of the Wild style Link was released by Hallmark for Christmas 2022. It was incredibly well detailed and was a great bit of Nintendo merchandise. For many people, The Legend of Zelda is THE game series when it comes to adventure in a vast and fantastic world. The series has been going for 35 years and another entry to the series is just around the corner. Will Link continue his adventures through Hyrule for another 35 years? 
only time will tell. But certainly those of us playing The Legend of Zelda in 1987 never could have imagined that we would still be joining Link Force adventures across Hyrule and beyond this many years later. Merchandise and collectibles associated with this game series was sparing for many years, but has sure caught up in the last 10 or so. Now it seems Link is everywhere, and there are all types of different figures, ornaments, and collectibles at our fingertips. Thanks for joining me on this adventure into the toys, collectibles, and merchandise of The Legend of Zelda. This is one of my favorite game series of all time, and I grew up playing it. Every time a new game in this series comes out, it feels like having old friends drop over with the anticipation that you're going to have a lot of fun, no matter how old you get. You just can't wait to see them again. If you enjoy the content, please hit the like button and subscribe to stay in touch for future content. There are many more quests to undertake before we discover all the little things that made the adventure of childhood so much fun.